Okay, so 7e, properties of ax plus b. Now, this here, the first part of it is just going to be number crunching, uh, sort of monotonous formulas, just apply them. And then the last few questions, we start to get a bit of a context and the purpose of it and what it means. So we've got these three rules that we're going to learn here. And we've got a random variable x, and then we're introducing a new random variable y, which has some linear relationship to x. Okay? Um, so if y and x are linearly related, then y has these properties. So we're going to start with this one here. We've got x as a random variable, has a mean of 3.6 and a standard deviation of 1.2. Find e of y. E of y. So e of y is equal to a times e of x plus b. So if we look here, this is our mean, all right? This is our e of x. Mean and e of x mean the same thing, the expected value. Um, this here is our a value, all right? A, and this here is our b value. Y is ax plus b. We've got here's our expected value, and here's our standard deviation of x. Alright, so we're asked to find e of y, the expected value of y, and it's equal to a times e of x, so that means 2 times the expected value of x, 3.6, and then plus b, the value of b is minus 3, so that's going to be 7.2, take away 3, 4.2b. So y, the random variable y is linked to x, such that the expected value is 4.2. Okay, move on to the variance. All right, the variance of y is gonna be a squared times the variance of x. So that's gonna be two squared in our circumstance, multiplied by the variance of x. Now we don't have the variance of x, but we do have the standard deviation of x. And the variance is equal to the standard deviation squared, right? So, can someone type that in for me? So, 1.2 squared is 1.44. 1.44, and we have 4 times 1.44. 5.76. 5.76. And then for the standard deviation of y is equal to now this symbol here. Hopefully we've seen it before, but it means the modulus, it means the absolute value, means the size, the magnitude. How big is that number a? And so that just means if it's a negative, you just disregard it. Okay, it's the modulus of a times by the standard deviation of x. So the, the size of this number here, 2, is 2. And we're multiplying it by the standard deviation of x, which is 1.2, we've got 2.4. All right. So, based off the standard, based off the um, properties of x, x is related to y in this manner, and so we're able to determine the properties of y. All right, I'll rub that out. So that's what you're starting with. You're starting with some number crunching. Maybe can I just point out one place where people people have struggled in the past is when they have something like this. Y equals x take three on top of two. All right. The best way to think about it is that it's half x, take 3 on 2. Alright, so the value of a is half, the value of b is minus 3 on 2. So always think like that. Whenever we have these fractions, pull it out in front. Alright, we'll clear this space so we can move on to our example. With context, I'll leave the properties up there. Alright, we've got Sherlock is a detective. Mm -hmm. He makes 10,000 bucks a month plus $2,000 for each crime that he solves. And the probability of solving the crime is a discrete variable given by the distribution below. All right, let's write it out. We've got 0.1, k, 0.36, 0.2, and 0.1. Okay, part A says find the value of k. All right, so it wants us to determine what is that probability of that event. Well, we know all probabilities add to 1. So what have we got here? 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.76, I've got 0.24. All right, so that's one mark. You don't have to show you any working out for it. Just need to state it. Part B, find E of X and state its meaning. All right, part B, so E of X. So here, you can 
go straight to your calculator, type it in your stat mode. Um, you don't gain anything from writing out the expression for it, unless it specifically says write an expression for EMX. You're not required to write it out unless it says that. So I'm going to, I'm going to write it out anyway, show you what's going on. 0.24, someone can calculate it for me, that's good. Okay, so find it and explain its meaning. All right, so what is this distribution? Here we have the possible events. What are the possible events? The number of cases that he's going to solve. He's got a probability of 0.1 of solving zero cases. A probability of 0.24 of solving one case. So what we've got here is the expected number of cases he will solve per month. On average, Sherlock solves 1.96 cases per month. Alright. Okay, here's where we make the link. Let Y be the amount of money that Sherlock earns per month. Express Y in terms of X. So it says he earns $10,000 plus $2,000 for each case. Where X is the number of cases, right? Alright, so we've got a relationship between the money he's making, Y, and the number of cases that he's solving, X. X finds E of Y and interpret its meaning. So we'll use this formula here. E of Y, the expected value of Y, is equal to A times E of X. So that's going to be 2000, the coefficient of X, multiplied by 1.96. So A, E of X, plus B. So, what's that? Nineteen sixty three nine four two plus ten. Okay, what does it mean? It's how much he can expect to make per month on average. Alright, so the variable x, how many cases he's solving per average, and based off that, how much he's making uh, in terms of money per average. So we'll start off some fairly basic uh, formula 